let's move on. What do you have for us today? Oh, God. Well, the, go <laughs> the government and undercover things may be involved. That is one of the theories. But oh, no. Are... <laughs> but that's just one of the theories, as there are probably many, because it is an unsolved mystery. <gasps> That's always my favorite part. I like when you <laughs> sing and I do interpretive dance. It's one of my favorite parts. Yeah, Sam. Uh, love that about us. We have good times. <laughs> we have a good time here. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Some days are better than others. Go on. Unsolved Mystery. I'm so excited. I am telling a story. A mysterious, unsolved, what the hell is going on story about a family. Um, the Lee family is their name. Okay. So the dream of Steve and Beth Lee and their two sons was to live in the Black Forest region of Colorado. It's okay. a densely forested area of 200,000 acres that was known for being quiet, peaceful, full of beauty, trees, hikes, Love water that for them. everywhere. Mm. The population is about 14,500 people, so not like crazy small, but not huge by any means. And so it is quiet. Everybody's pretty spread out because you're just like deep in the woods. And it is a community that is governed by El Paso County and is a part of the larger Colorado Springs area. Just to lay in the background here. If you're I've been to Colorado Springs. It's gorge. So gorge. And gorge. I, I mean, I just love Colorado in general. Same. But yeah, Colorado Springs, so gorge. The Black Forest also sits on the southern edge of what is known as the Denver Basin, and the basin is composed mainly of up, uplifted granite dating back in some areas 50 to 1 million years, and there is also Jesus. a layer of thinner sandstone and that. shale. I know, I was like, who? 50 to 1 million, that's a range, okay. And there's also a layer of thinner sandstone and shale, which allows groundwater to flow. And that is important to know as we come up with our theories, the minerals, um, the water that flows. Oh. It is the most extensive groundwater resource in the entire county. And one possible reason for the unexplained happenings that occur in this area, mineral deposits, flowing water, they could be paranormal or supernatural conductors inviting things in. So that's just something to like shove in your pocket. Keep that for later. You might need it. <laughs> Steve Lee drove trucks for a living and always dreamed about Colorado um, when he would drive through it. And finally, he made it there with his family. And for four years, they rented homes in this big forest area northeast of Colorado Springs before finding a spacious two-story log cabin home off mm. of Swan Road in the thickest part of the woods. But what they were not told from the former tenant was that he didn't live there for a super long time. He believed it was cursed, that it was evil, or that somebody was stalking him. And he didn't mention it because he felt like he was delusional and only had himself as a witness. So he just kept it in his back pocket and tried to sell it because it looks like a storybook log cabin in a dense forest. And that is what this family was looking for. Didn't want to be ridiculed. This was the 90s. People weren't ready for the weird, you know, in the way we are now. So... Here we are. So the Lees signed a lease in May 1991, moved into the house, and then barely, like, just slightly less than a year later in 1992, they purchased this five-acre dream home. And that was when the problems began. Hmm. Within weeks of buying this new home, the gates of hell essentially opened up. <laughs> I know, it's dramatic, but also... <laughs> I was gonna say that's so dramatic it is but like good lord i don't know how this family didn't move out sooner beth was quoted as saying that in that first year after purchasing she said they would come home on most nights and it felt like the fourth of july was in their living room and in their master bedroom they had lights flashing people stomping across the roof like the sound of like what could only be either gunshots or fireworks exploding that were coming from essentially nowhere. Like they would walk around their land. They didn't see anything, but the lights were going off as if they were strobe lights. They would come home to this. And then just at some random point it would stop and they okay. you know they're going to the fuse box and they're trying to do things and nothing is working. And they just kind of had to deal with it. 
and then it would eventually stop and they would just say okay and go to bed this is literally poltergeist i mean correct one night they woke up and they heard orchestra music and their kids were fast asleep so they were like why can only we hear it because it was blasting through the house but again never found the source this is in the 90s there's not just like an alexa or like a bluetooth speaker playing they were like hello good morning who's there no like stereo boombox anything that was never explained and then strange things started to happen every day. It started monthly, then bi-weekly, then weekly, and then finally, like, every day. Their life was just a living hell. Um, they would hear chains rattling. The sons would say they saw weird flashing lights and shadows in their room. Appliances would be going on and off by themselves. Untraceable chemical odors were going off and then it got so bad that they were even burning the family members eyes and throats and they were going to the doctor constantly and nobody could find the source steve lee firmly believed that someone was just trying to scare his family out of this new home he felt like they got it way too easily because they did because the former tenant yeah. was like get me the hell out of here but he was like oh somebody set us up and he started to get this crazy paranoia and he's you know calling the police and bringing people in trusted people friends and family in town like what is going on here like is somebody mad at us is somebody coming after us because we are getting physically ill we're not sleeping we're terrified and like we don't know what's going on yeah we're being attacked nightly like attacked um and the chemical thing is it's so weird the fact that it was like they're getting like the bloodshot eyes and burning throats but nobody can find why and he's from louisiana and he was quoted as saying i had just enough redneck left to fight back (laughs) against this elusive presence no matter what it took but i truly just didn't know what or who it was no liberal could withstand no liberal could withstand this torment but my redneck go on there's been a lot of trigger (laughs) trigger words lately (laughs) goodness So he installed a state-of-the-art security system with video surveillance cameras and motion detectors all around the house because he is like, we're going to catch this bastard. It's like living with Bam Margera. Yes, truly. (laughs) (laughs) It's like we walked in, there was an alligator in the kitchen and fireworks went off in the car when I started in. (laughs) Yep, and the cameras were on. It was all caught. We were pranked. I know. It was Bam the whole time. Surprise. Surprise. Solved mystery. MTV presents. (laughs) so yeah state-of-the-art surveillance system there they have you know even alarms that would have like blaring sounds that would come off and then of course some of the time the alarms would go off in the middle of the night they're looking on the cameras they're watching the tape back nothing had triggered them nothing went by Mm. why did the sounds go off oh the security system is now working against us too it's conspiring with someone or the house or i don't know electricity energy who Burn knows? It down. So it's just it. going bad. Yeah. And over the next four years, they had 62 unexplainable break ins, quote unquote, as they put it. And they had to have the El Paso break-ins. County Sheriff's Department open an investigation in 1993. And they ended up conducting 45 follow ups in those following years because, you know, doors were getting unlocked and opened, security alarm countless times getting triggered. So they're like, we, like, We don't know what else to do but call the police. But every time, there's no evidence of a crime and they just, they go home again. But Mm -hmm. they came out every single time and it was just, it was getting ridiculous. Finally, the sheriff stopped responding because they're, (laughs) it was like, I can't anymore. The sheriff was like, you know what? Here's the deal. You're on your own. Sorry about it. Call the National Guard. I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) It's out of my hands. (laughs) So they have to hire a private investigator to figure this out. And in the next two years, they spent $40,000 on security and they used up like all of their personal savings, college Uh. funds, investments. Like they are just blowing through it because they're like someone, like they're being tortured. And I'm also like, move out. Get the, what are you doing? Determination to stay there. Is that that red blood? (laughs) Steve Lee. (laughs) (laughs) Never give up. Never surrender. About this time. (laughs) As like they've hired the private investigator, money is gone. God. Steve is noticing that photographs and videotapes taken in certain locations on the property had light streaks running through them and sometimes even translucent faces appearing on the film. 
Ugh. Film emulsion is sensitive to a wider range of the electromagnetic spectrum beyond visible light, which is why events can be caught in photo in photographs. Photographed on film. Which is why we all get excited about orbs and different things. But mm. um three parts of the Lee house seemed especially prone to these unusual photographic events. There was an outside wall next to their satellite dish, the living room, and then the upstairs master bedroom where they were also like seeing the flashing lights and the fireworks and all of those things. But mm. they tried to document the activity even further. Steve borrowed or purchased every type of camera he could. This poor man. Um, to see if bizarre images appeared, but no matter what type of camera or film he used, he captured, like, he thought he would capture something crazy, but it was always just, like, some beams, some orbs, and maybe a little outline here and there, and it was still just, like, but what? Like, I want to get, like, he really thought he was going to get a human or an animal, so he was just, like, what the fuck are these lights? Like, he was not thinking supernatural anything. He was, like, I got them now. And still, yeah. it was just like, here's a light. And I got like, these maybe vandals. A shadow person. Jesus. Like, he just didn't know what to do. So, Steve and Beth finally agreed that, like, something is going on, and we might need to start to believe, become a weirdo, and think, <laughs> is it supernatural? Because, like, we're not catching anything, but we're getting, like, weird ass something. Also, we have no more money. <laughs> yeah, and we don't have any money, so somebody help us. So then they send in their pictures to the television show Sightings, which was like a paranormal phenomenon at the time. And again, because they're like, we have no money, but like, this will be our chance because they will come to us and maybe we'll get a little money and figure the fuck out. So this show comes in and they like they have a whole team, including a Hollywood special effects technician named Edson Williams, who was examining their film and like doing a real deep dive on it because they have to rule out anything that could be logical. And he told producers after his research that like these light images would be very, very difficult, especially in that, in that time, obviously now you can do like anything to yeah. reproduce any of the strange outlines and just some of the unexplainable lights. He, it was like, this defies the laws of optics as I know it. Like, I don't think anything is being faked here. So sightings sends out their film crew to the black forest and they get on site and they document some of the weird phenomena. And they had a Minneapolis ghostbuster named echo boating. Echo boating. Isn't that a great name? That's a really good name. Some people. Blessed. blessed. Cheers to echo boating. Echo quickly identified a threatening male spirit in the living room, like within like 30 seconds. Yeah. And a, more sophisticated thermal imaging cameras showed the presence of the ghost as well, who, according to Bodine, was responsible for things happening here. And this presence considers it to be his place. Hmm. Then Bodine walks around, like, stayed there for a hot second and was like, this room is crazy and this guy hates you. But then, like, walked around the rest of the house and said there could be up to 20 more spirits and there is, like, otherworldly activity. There is no doubt. This is monumental. I haven't seen anything like this. They say there was a portal. They usually say there's a portal. I know. I was like, we do get to that. I was like, this is just the first of many people who yeah. investigated. But she felt very uncomfortable in the upstairs bedroom. And she said it was full of spirits and not restful. And they were like, you don't say. And um, one of the sightings cameras mysteriously flipped off of its tripod and crashed to the floor. And an odd thumping electromagnetic interference was picked up by the crew's equipment and steve scanner as well and which he kept on the nightstand and then also in this room during the filming of a discussion between echo and beth we um both suddenly felt like someone was holding them down Eesh. and they said they couldn't breathe properly like they were struggling to catch their breath okay then Echo wants to halt the interview, gets up from the table, and is like, I can't even continue on. And Sherry, a member of the backup film crew, said that something went inside of her, and her chest, arms, and legs went numb. She fell into a chair and started bawling, sobbing uncontrollably, full of terror. She said there was an unseen force, like, something is in me. It almost took over me, but, like, I think I, like, got away just in time. So, how have I never... How have heard we never of heard of this? And actually what's weird is there is like <laughs> not much on it online, but it's like everyone who lives around this area is like, oh yeah, the old black forest. What? Okay. But there's like 
and yeah, and I was like, and I'm going to get to that at the end of it too, of like how strange it is, like the follow up with all of this. But she gets numb girl, gets escorted off the property. Oh and Echo is like, I don't think I can continue on. The sightings equipment, like the cameras, the audio recorders, they picked up a bunch of shit. You can actually look it all up on YouTube. There's like old sightings episodes everywhere. So you can like see some of the weirdness. And sure, you can say it was faked for television. Like, of course, everything can be explained yeah. away. But there are some weird, mysterious videos and you can go out and watch it. But basically the crew left like, no, thanks. I don't get paid enough. Truly. Do not get paid enough. So they leave and they're like, yeah, your house is fucked, but we don't really know what it is. Like there were, it seems like there were multiple things going we have on. No we have answers. to get out of here. Yeah. And then like right after they leave, Steve got a photo back from his film that he shot during that same period. And it looked just like a white dagger, but in the form of light pointed directly at his forehead. And the next day mm. he woke with a painful golf ball sized welt on his forehead he was rushed to the emergency room in Colorado Springs and a CAT scan of his head revealed no cause for the disfigured lump. And the doctors just said, all we can really do is give you meds for your pain because you're not telling us how this formed. So like, this is really all we can do. And he's like, I don't fucking know how it was formed. But of course they're like, sorry, bro. And he's just sent home. Sightings did return six months later and they brought a psychic in and his name was Peter James. And he said he thought there was a vortex on the pop on the property. Okay. He was touring the house and he was overwhelmed by a burning chemical odor. And then suddenly out of nowhere said, do you know anything about the name Howard? And Steve and Beth were like shocked, like jaws dropped all the blood, like left their face because it is, they have a dear friend named Howard who they had never mentioned before because they're like, why is he important to this? It's just our friend who lives like further away in town. But he actually was a really good friend. They referred to him as like their adopted granddaddy and they'd known him for 10 years. And they start to reveal a little bit more as the psychic is like, Howard is powerful here. And the chemical smell is starting to become overpowering the more they're talking about it. And apparently Howard's son, they reveal as they're talking, Howard Jr. died of a drug overdose in the 1960s. And his best friend was a pharmacist. And the two stole per prescription drugs all the time, got high together. It was totally plausible. But Peter James, the psychic, said, no, no, Howard Jr. is very much here. He's been trying to get a hold of you. He is a rift in space time, as he referred to oh. it, on this property. Sure. And he wanted to make contact with his father to explain that he actually has been murdered and nobody knows who murdered him. So another layer of mystery has been added to this fucked up weird story. <laughs> and yeah, like still like nobody knows what actually happened. There's not enough evidence. So it's still just like, no, he overdosed. But this guy believed that he was murdered and they needed to find who it was. But they were like, no, we have other things to worry about. So Steve is obviously blown away that he knows this revelation and relates to the name Howard. And he's like, we definitely never mentioned it, but he was like, okay, I want to listen to this guy and see if he knows anything else. But Peter James then kind of left the Howard thing aside and was like, no, but this vortex, like the reason Howard Jr. is able to get in is because this property is a special space where there is like a rip. There is a hole you are connected. And I've only seen this a couple of times before and other people had said that Black Forest as a whole, not just this log cabin, had had I was going to say, it may be the location, not necessarily mm -hmm. the building. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, this cabin was, like, feeling the most of it, but it's like, that's <laughs> yeah. why that, like, it's water... Fucking like Evil Dead Jesus, prequel. Seriously. God. <laughs> it does feel that way. <laughs> oh, like, what's in the basement? Is there a journal? <laughs> what's going on? So... Peter James, um, he returned a third time then, I think, without the sightings crew this time. He just came on his own because he was like, I, this place is crazy. I, I gotta, gotta get more. more of this cabin. So he concentrated his efforts on the most active spot in the house, the master bedroom, and many events had been recorded here near the entry to a small closet in the room, as well as in a hundred-year-old mirror. Several psychics had pinpointed the closet as the gateway to the other side, and the mirror was an endless source of photographs of apparitions of floating faces, bodies. So James believed the mirror reflected the faces of the spirits going in and out of this gateway, 
and like that some of the pictures were computer enhanced to show these eerie faces that were peering back in and they all looked a little bit different and it's awful and I can't think about it too much but um there was an energy here unlike anything again he had ever experienced what year was this again this was in the 90s at this point this was like 95 96 okay as like Peter James was coming back and forth and sightings couldn't get enough of him Peter James after this third visit I don't think returned again but he was like damn like not only this cabin, but like black forest as a whole needs to be looked into. Like this is something I've never experienced. Then after this, cause they're still like, but what? A Hopi shaman is consulted on the black forest hauntings and says this place is a rainbow vortex. Again, piggybacking on the vortex thing, not even knowing about Peter James or sightings and saying that this energy spot is one of only like four on the planet that connect our world with the next and two that were referenced (laughs) apparently there was one in arizona and one in london and i was like okay well that's the next thing i'm gonna go down the rabbit hole for (laughs) um and they are very strong in frequency and intensity and the lee house like doors open and close by themselves the appliances the lights like objects disappear the alarms the shadowy figures la 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 la, the disembodied voices red yellow and white light worms are seen and recorded as well as apparitions of an old lady a little girl a burly man all of this was collected over the years um some were seen in 1800s clothing some were in military garb actually steve said quite often they were in military garb and it's just like everyone who came there was like oh yeah this is it's there's a rip then you are like right above it, I think. And that's oh, why cool. you're seeing those things. How lucky am I? I can't believe to I have bought a house on a rip. <sighs> on this a rip would in truly time been and my space. nightmare. <laughs> and again, I'm like, move the fuck out. I don't get it. People put up with way too much. I'm scared when like a creak on our wood floor goes off and I'm like, well, who's here to murder me? Our pantry door is now broken for the third time. In... Does it just like creak open? It's just, no, it just, if it, like we go to open and it falls off. I'm just saying like our pantry door is broken for the third time in like the two and a half years we've lived here and I'm about to fucking move. So if, if this <laughs> I <happen>. lived <laughs> oh. in this fucking house, <laughs> I know. This pantry door is about to send me to another state. I'm I'm I thought you were gonna say like it's like creaks open and you're like, This is my thirteenth reason. Like (laughs) it won't stop creaking. (laughs) No, it's just broken and I'm done. I'm done. I'm over it. I would be honestly. So I can't imagine rip it off. Yeah, I can't imagine (laughs) living in a house with this kind of stuff happening in it. It's too much. By the beginning of 1997, the Lees had spent nearly $70,000 trying to find the source of this energy, and they had collected over over 3,000 photos and 400 videotapes showing all of this phenomena. And Steve Lee continues, to this day, um, collecting video and, like, still kind of trying to figure it out. And I imagine that he's, like, a little off his rocker and is just, like, sitting with a rifle and on his front porch. But gotta be. They've truly brought in everyone and like nobody knows what to do with it but what's interesting is steve um i don't know what he believes to this day because again it is very difficult to find updates which like blows my mind like everything is from the early 2000s live stream like what are we doing i know (laughs) where's your blog steve the early 2000s and i'm like what where are these people and what is going on but of course i looked up the address because there is an address given um, it's on Swan Road. It is 8325 Swan Road. We are just doxing people left and right this episode. <laughs> We're like, the CIA bordello was... <laughs> I know. We did give addresses in both of our stories. <laughs> With yours, they might be able to break in. I don't know. With this place, it is like so heavily guarded. Oh. Surveillance everywhere, as we've talked about. Gates, yeah. like very high gates locked and signs everywhere. Like you'll be shot on site if you trespass. So it's it's wild. And like from Google Photos, when you look up the address, like you can only see like the base of their long driveway and the woods and like random things here and there and like a glimpse of maybe a log cabin. But yeah, so good luck. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. People do still, like, of drive course. by on the outside of the gate, but, like, there's just no way to even get close. But I looked it up on Zillow, and Redfin 
because I was like, has it been sold? Where are the updates? And it still says the last purchase date was in 1992. And yeah. it was for like $120,000. And it is a five bedroom, four bath, like beautiful log cabin in the woods. So it's now would be like $1.5 million. But they're, they're still just sitting pretty. Because A, I think they've gone insane trying to discover what's going on here. But B, like also nobody's going to buy it because now everybody knows about it. I actually, speaking of houses, um, the the Uninvited, the Union Screaming House in Missouri, I was actually doing research for, there's a little plug, for our um, new webpage, www.keepitweirdpodcast.com slash book recommendations. Love when you say www. <laughs> I'm <me>. www <laughs> on the World, World Wide, Wide Web. Web. <laughs> so we've started adding book recommendations to our website because you guys are always asking for that. And I happen to be looking for a picture to post of of just like the the cover of Un- uninvited and right randomly i saw the address of the house so i like googled it i just wanted to see what the and yeah their front door has an enormous like private property sign on it so like whoever lives there now is like don't fucking come to don't, my fucking house please. and ask me if i experience anything weird i don't want to talk to you no solicitors private property please don't knock on my door so I can't imagine if I ever lived in a super haunted house, you wouldn't hear from me. No, absolutely I'm not. I'm telling you. <laughs> Actually, just kidding. I wouldn't be able to stop talking about it. You would know every detail. I know. Who am I kidding? Yeah, I was like, I'm going to write a book. I'll write several. <laughs> yeah, I would I would have a live stream going, as you said. Um, But to kind of wrap this up, the reason this is under Unsolved Mysteries and not Paranormal Paradise is because Steve... And I still believe like this is his theory to this day, as I was like kind of starting to say before, he was like, he was still holding on to this being a real person and no, not a typical vandal prankster because they, right. after all these years had not caught anybody, but he believed it was the U S government. Hey, he believed the military was involved because of all of the visuals of the military garb. Mm-hmm. And he thought the government was using his family as human Guinea pigs to test laser holograms and biological weapons for psychic warfare. Mm-hmm. Very specific. Mm-hmm. He was like, this is definitely, a- this is what the CIA is up to today. This is what they're up to scaring the shit out of some innocent family and, Colorado Springs. <laughs> they knew the Black Forest community would be it cuz it's quiet, it's in the woods. Who could who would ever expect? Nobody explores the deep forest. No. And so they're like, we'll get away with it. This poor family, but like let's test them. And em. everyone's going to call them crazy. No one's going to believe them, so we might as well. Correct. He saw countless times caught on every kind of camera thing he had military fatigues carrying assault rifles on his property and he spent hours himself trying to photograph and catch them and one of his neighbors Mm -hmm. obtained a straining order to keep him from taking any more pictures across property lines um, because he was starting to like really push it which like they had five acres of land and he was still like going to the edge because it was like but which again is when I'm like man this poor family has probably had several nervous breakdowns. Steve accused government agents of cutting off the electricity to his home and whenever it was vacant and they were out of town, he thought people were entering without being detected. He, because they were cutting off the electricity, he thought they were spraying chemicals in the van and the truck and it was leaving him deathly ill because he would still smell the chemicals sometimes when he got in his truck, which that Mm. was also interesting to me. It wasn't just in the house. Like he was being dosed. Yeah, so that's what I'm kind of like, wait, was somebody doing Hold something? Because, like, what? we left the property, and he was, like, getting really sick. And um, he believed the secret agents, at this point, he was like, it's secret agents, for sure. They were following him when he would visit his mother-in-law in Gunnison, Colorado, or even when he went all the way to Louisiana, because he was smelling things, feeling things. Again, like, could be paranoia, so he's starting to lose it, but, like, right. I- But I don't know. Like, it's very weird weird that, like, the smells were even following him. So I also, again, will say I think it's so weird you can't find a ton of updates on this. And they're just, like, this closed off, I guess they're closed off shut-ins still living in this house that hasn't been sold since 1992. You can't get on the property. You can only drive by. But, of course, there is all the hearsay of the forums on the internet saying that Black Forest is lovely. A lot of people go there, you know, to hike and feel the serene 
nature, meditative state. But Mm. then the other half of people are saying, no, I felt like shit when I went to Black Forest. Like something dark is brewing there. Like I have never even been to the house, the log cabin, but like I don't go to Black Forest anymore. It feels very dark. Let's talk about the grounds that have, you know, the water, the minerals, that mix. Like that is just like asking for paranormal activity. It's just a constant like energy surge. Yep. And there was, I mean, Native Americans were on that land for many, many years, as they were everywhere of before course. we were assholes. And, like, there are theories of it being, you know, houses, beautiful subdivisions, as they are now, you know, and, like, the modern, little modern houses with their white brick and black shutters. They could all be sitting on, like, Native burial grounds. Like, we we don't know for sure, but that is absolutely a plausible theory, And this could be a vortex, this could be a haunting, this could be the CIA, this could be, like, the best prankster of all time. Like, How close is it to Colorado Springs? It's in, like, the outside metropolitan area, I believe, so it's within, like, 15 miles. Because there's a military base there. And that is why he thinks the military part is true. And, like, why is everybody in a military uniform who's caught on camera? Yeah, what are they doing? shadowy. So anyway, at first I was like, oh, a paranormal paradise segment. No. And the more I read, I was like, no, no. It's a I'm mystery. getting a vibe. Something weird's happening there. And I think the CIA is involved. Can I-